I, I, you know, it's, it's art, it's design, it's architecture, it's landscape. Uh, most of all, it's about being creative about your environment and, and thinking about the future um, and make places where people feel, feel, feel more connected. So, so I think if we, we talk about art in public space, there's this notion of a, of a bronze sculpture with a sign, please do not touch. That's a very old dated way of thinking about art. Um, art is there to trigger, to change perception and uh, to question reality or to inspire science. So art is on the forefront of what a city could be. Uh, that's the role, I think. So, I mean, pollution, air pollution, is one of those things that sort of hits us in the face. We never expected it and suddenly it's there and we're figuring out how, how much damage it does to, it does to us. So uh, somehow our cities have become machines that are killing us. Uh, children get lung cancer when they're eight years old. That, that, that's crazy. Um, so you need government realizing the problem, investing in the clean energy and electro cars and the more bicycles. But that, that's sort of long term, 10, 15 years. I think we should act now as well. And projects like Smog Free are sort of bottom up approaches or Smog Free Bicycle as well in the tower where step by step we improve the life of people, small scale, bigger scale, larger scale. Um, so government works top down, we work bottom up and we meet in the middle and together create impact. Um, I think I would love to see science and design and creativity being applied to how we can cure global changes. So the rising of the sea level, uh, providing clean air, providing clean, clean energy. Uh, that's the new playground. That's, that's where the new innovations, in my opinion, can happen. So we should be more curious towards that. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a budget and a deadline and then, <laughs> and then we make it happen. That's how you start. No, I think you need a vision. Um, is it useful to build uh, an 8 million euro uh, parking uh, uh, place on the ground? Uh, if all the cars become self-driving, you know, maybe that's not the best investment in the world that you're going to make the coming five years. Or why are you just adding more highways? Uh, will our desire for mobility not change uh, the coming five to ten years? So if you don't have a vision, you, yeah, you're always missing. Eh? You, you're, you're, you, you'll never hit bullseye. Um, and at the same time, it's a way to engage the people. How do they want the city to look like? Is it about clean air, clean water, clean energy? Um, technology allows us to make things happen which a long time ago were unimaginable. So we need this kind of sort of dialogue with each other. Um, I don't have all the answers, nobody has, but from the interaction between city and citizens, uh, step by step we improve and that's the conversation we should have. So do a pilot, learn from it, make a mistake, show it. So I think the promotion of uh, light emitting bicycle paths in Singapore the notion of the energy harvesting kites I was showing you, that kites which generate power, that is something that could be very, very applied. First as a sort of proto-pilot scale and then upscale to the rest of the city to, to make the Singapore of tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Because in a way, everything already is here artificial, is man and woman made. Um, so why not sort of use that thinking and apply it to, to future? Yeah, that's great. So if you, if you, we've been talking about it in a lecture, like an anthill doesn't have a traffic jam. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, or, or a flock of birds or a sunflower sort of, sort of rotates with the sun. So nature has somehow found ways, patterns, smartness to become hybrid, to become in balance. Uh, human beings are not there yet. <laughs> And we are in disharmony and we have traffic jams, we have light pollution, we have uh, noise pollution, we have air pollution. Um, we have to engineer our, and design our way out of it. And that's really good about CLC, that you have a sort of platform where people are investing in new ideas, thinking ahead. Uh, and let's connect them with, with a new generation of designers, of makers, of architects, which say we don't want to... For us, luxury is not a, not a Rolodex or a Ferrari, but it's, it's clean air, it's clean water, it's a place which is good for us. And why can Singapore not be a hub for, or like a platform for innovation? That the mayor of Paris and the mayor of Medellin and the mayor of, uh, of Delhi can come to learn and see how we can upscale it there. Uh, 
so see city, see Singapore as a platform, a uh, launching pad, a living lab. Um, um, that is for me the true essence of, of, of the city. Yeah. So technology is a great tool. Uh, technology is a great medium. But you should always question what is the message. Eh? So we shouldn't glamorize technology in itself because that, that, that's not going to save us. It's, it's the mind, it's the mentality, it's the social element uh, technology can help as a tool. Uh, right now we live in a world where we're sort of feeding a computer screen, the, the iPhone, including myself. Eh? We have our, our hopes, our desires, our dreams to Facebook and Twitter. We're feeding machines. And while our physical world is most of the time crashing, uh, trapped. So I think it would be very interesting to explore what happens when technology jumps out of the computer screen and, and becomes more part of the things that we wear, the roads that we drive on, the, the cities we inhabit, to improve life. And that is, I think, why the city is the place for innovation. Because it's not about an app anymore. <laughs> you should see the street as an interface or a building. Um, Combining nature and technology uh, to make places where, you, where yeah, which make you happy. That, 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 uh, and, and I think it's very, very possible. Yeah, I think we're, in a way we're already doing it, but now I want more. <laughs>